what? In what world should an Arborvitae this size be 170? I mean, and it's on clearance. Even on clearance, that's that's stupid. I don't I don't know what those are. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. I'm at Lowe's. Time to get some mulch. Get some things done for winter time, or start prepping for winter time. Some cold in the forecast coming up next week, which will be the week this video comes out, a few days prior. And uh, I like to get the stuff before it is just frozen bags. That's never fun, loading frozen bags of mulch onto a cart. That's hard to spread it to when it gets to that point. So gonna grab a few bags. It's gonna take a few trips. So it's just figured I'd start that. I haven't been to Lowe's in a long time. Thought I'd start the vlog while I'm here. The challenge when I'm here is finding a flatbed. I could never find a freaking flatbed, but it looks like they got a whole bunch of them over here. So that's nice. Today is it's like October 27th. I think so. There's not much extra plant wise. Not much to see. Yeah. Load number one. Gonna take this home and come back and probably get some more. I'm going to do a top dress or a bottom dressing with hardwood mulch and do the cypress on top of it this year. Oh, I didn't even mention this is all for the bananas and the gingers and the things that need heavy mulching during the winter time. It it takes a lot of mulch. Okay, heading back to Lowe's, went home, dropped off the first load, and uh, <laughs> Thought there would be some pretty fall color to look at down this road. I'm taking a different road to get there, and, but the things are still pretty green. So, well, I tried. That's better. There's some color down here. Some, not as much as I've seen in other areas, but it's still pretty. Looks nice. For those of you who don't get to see the fall colors, there's a little taste of some fall for you. Ooh, it smells very nice over here. Oh, these are absolutely adorable. I'll back up so you can see them. So there's stone pines right there. It's on 7 to 10, 7 to 11, 25 to 35 wide, 35 to 60 tall. Well, that's okay. That, that's a big plant. I have some nice little dracaenas. I have a mask on. Oh, you see, might be. Might be a little hard to hear me. Sorry about that. I can't. Where's the camera? There it is trying to look at the camera right there and my hair is a total mess lots of hanging baskets and fun things in here little orchids i guess if there's no one here i probably don't nope can't do it makes me paranoid that's not how that's supposed to go vaccinated but still not down with the cootie Ooh, pretty rabbit's foot man that's a nice full plant it's got a little bit of dryness in it but it's pretty pretty good size well that one approaching houseplant season i'm getting kind of excited about it 20 bucks wow okay i guess that's not terrible but oof. calatheas haven't seen these on lows in a long time at least not for under like 30 dollars how much is 11.98 yeah, still a price increase you, know, you used to be able to get a lot of these things for like four bucks they weren't in pots this big though Ooh, that's a fun syngonium I don't know which one it is. It's hard to say what it's supposed to look like since it's sitting back there in the dark, sorted foliage. Hmm, that's that's useful. Thanks for that. Little altissimas down here. I know this is really neither here nor there to what the rest of this vlog is going to be, but I figure since I'm here, we haven't been here in a long time, and have a quick look at things. Though I'm fairly certain I don't think I ever really introduced the vlog and said what I'm doing this week. I, I need to move the plants in this week. The mulch is just need to get that done before the cold moves in next week. So like I said, the frozen bags. You saw all that mist out there. Pretty gloomy over the next few days. I wanted to get the mulch before it starts to get sopping wet and I'll take it home and put a tarp over it. I don't care if it gets sopping wet at home, but uh, I don't like buying it when it's sopping wet. It's a lot harder. You know, you get it in the cart and then you gotta take it out and pay for it and you gotta put it in the car and then you gotta get it out of the car. Meh. Why is this on clearance? It's not on flower. Is that all it takes? So thirteen ninety eight. That would be seven bucks. Hmm. Oh, this that little rapid aphora. Isn't that cute? It's just I like the pot. Sansevieria is nice, but look at the pot. What a fun little pot. Okay, so this one looks sad because it is. It just needs some water. But I haven't been able to find many of the microstorms or kangaroo paw ferns, which I don't know if that's even what this is. 
smells like it. Yeah, the leaves just aren't fully forked out. Might be a different type of some kind, but oof. Sorry, I keep pulling it close to the camera because I keep sniffing it. Kangaroo paws have a really nice fragrance to them. Uh, it's sad, but I'm gonna get it. Just needs water. These are one of my favorite plants. Favorite house plants, I should say, as far as just like things with green foliage on them. I absolutely love these. I already have one, but I just, I would like another one. <gasps> Ooh, that's beautiful. Oh, I just want the pot. I don't care about the sands of area. I love that pot. But the last thing I need right now are more pots, so won't be doing that. Yeah, there it is. There's our house plants. I'm gonna go get the rest of the mulch and go home now. Uh, I love that snowman. I'm a sucker for the old school plastic, blown plastic decorations. That's what I had growing up, you know, like those reindeer and the big snow. I, well, I still have them. So there's all that. It's just too windy here for the inflatable stuff. Just blows right over. <laughs> There's 16 more. I managed to get the 12 in just fine for the trip home with the first load. Should be able to squeeze four more in. I, well, I guess we'll find out. Eh, that ought to do it. I had to keep the pile as slender as I could because in a couple of days I'm gonna be moving through here with all the plants. Didn't want it to be in the way. Did manage to get it all in the car. Well, the second load. Managed to get it in the car. Now we just wait. That'll finish up with this probably in a different video because I don't think I'll have to start cutting down the bananas and everything next week or will have been this week by the time this video comes out. The forecast. Bouncing all over the place. I don't really know what's going to happen, but at least I'm prepared now. So I'll cover it up with a tarp and I have it to use for my bananas and my gingers and the needle palms and whatnot. So it was really windy and that thing just kept blowing over the plumeria so just, I left it. No sense in picking it back up if it's just going to blow over again, right? And I'm just bringing it up because I get asked about this every single year. The reason I buy it bagged instead of having it delivered is because the, the, around here, everybody I've contacted, it's actually like 30 bucks cheaper to just buy it bagged. So yeah, it's a lot of plastic. Not great for the environment, but the delivery, like that just doesn't work practically for me. I mean, it's only like a 25 or $30 difference, but They'll only dump it in the driveway, and I don't need it yet. So I don't know what I would do about that. They don't just come at your beck and call as soon as there's a frost and you have to do your mulching. And uh, there's nowhere in the backyard even if they could put it back here. And the HOA, they're not too hot on giant piles of mulch laying around for long periods of time while people are waiting to spread it down. And uh, the, what was the other thing? Oh, my, my back, my shoulder and everything. This is way less work than doing all the shoveling into the wheelbarrow and then piling it out this way. I can just take the number of bags I need over, slice them, dump them, and move on. So that's why I buy it bagged. I use this, I'll be talking about this more next week, but I use the cypress because it repels moisture, but it can acidify the soil if it builds up over like many, many, many years. That's why I'm having a layer of hardwood go down underneath it. So there's, there's all that. All the mulch stuff is clarified. Now it's time to do some cleaning in the garage, which I will actually be putting off for a couple of days, but y'all won't know that. We'll come back when I get to that. I still need to film the October garden tour and get a bunch of editing done and a bunch of other. Just this, this week, whew, by the time this video comes out, I guarantee you I'm going to be like passed out for the entire day. Once I get through this week, it's going to be smooth sailing, at least for a couple of months. Not because of the moving the plants in. That's really not that big of a deal. You know, it takes a few hours. Just throw them on a cart, move them in. Fairly simple to do. It's because I'm doing a lot of editing right now. But I should be done with that in a few days. So we get to enjoy things and relax. Oh, I can't wait. Oh, it has been a very busy few days. Hey, pumpkin. Is there something in your water bowl? What are you doing? Cats are weird. Silly animals. It's hollow. It's Halloween. Can't even see this. Turn that around. Get a nice look at the globe. So there's that. Got the October garden tour done, which the garden tours are never a big deal, but the weather was just not cooperating. And then when I filmed that video, and got it up here on my computer into Adobe, there, there wasn't any audio. 90 minutes, no audio. And I have like no voice because I've been filming a lot, which is why a lot of this is on my phone because I have filled up all of my memory cards. 
getting a whole lot of videos filmed. There's more down over there. I'm not doing Vlogmas, but I'm kind of doing Vlogmas, sort of. You don't know, Vlogmas is where YouTubers upload like a video every single day from, usually from Thanksgiving until Christmas. I've done it before. One, it's a lot of work. It takes a lot of time, but it's fun at the same time. But I just, I don't know. I feel weird doing that. I feel like it really could potentially get annoying having a video come out every single day. So what I've done is I made a very, very, very big list of videos that I've just wanted to film for a long time and videos that people have been requesting for me to film for a long time. And then I went through and made an outline for each one just to speed up the filming process. I don't always do that. Actually, I rarely do that. I usually just go on the fly. But th these are very, very simple outlines. Anyways, that made it a lot easier to get the filming done for Vlogmas. In order to pull it off, I have to do it before it's actually time to do it. I have to have like a two to three week lead on videos in order to keep up with editing and still be able to get the vlogs done and deal with the plant things and then the family things and the, uh, what's the, what's, what's the other thing going on right now? Oh, the holidays. So that's why I've been so busy and why my throat is like, feels like it's full of needles right now because I've filmed uh, 18 videos in about four days. That, that is a lot. Memory cards, my other memory cards are just full. I haven't backed them up yet because my hard drives are full. I need to go get another hard drive. So that's why a lot of this is on my phone. The start of the video would have been on my phone anyways. I use my phone when I vlog out in public. So for November, December, I will just be uploading Tuesdays and Thursdays and Saturdays instead of just Wednesdays and Saturdays. Figure that way, you <laughs> have the increased content, but it won't be so much that like it gets annoying in everybody's feeds. This is just a little preview of one of the things I'm working on right now. And I'm gonna run something past y'all while you're here because you know, I've been trying to up the edits. I'm gonna mute this, but just see the effect on here. I like to have that blur in the background and then the slide in, I think it looks nice. But if I'm walking around where that's blurred, does that make people dizzy? I have to wonder, doesn't that seem kind of dizzying? Maybe not. I don't know, it's, I, I'm not sure. Let me know what you think. The problem is that if I go through and change that, then I have to change all the other ones in the entire video and I'm already 17 minutes in and there are a lot of edits in here that just go all the way. I mean, you see all those little green dots? Those are the ones I've done and the ones that I need to do and yeah. Ugh. Oh, it'd be a pain to change that. Maybe I should. But I think it looks nice. I also don't want to make people seasick or motion sick. You, you know what I mean? Wow. Doesn't matter, that's enough of that. Just, I'm trying to get through this video because once I have this video done and edited, I'll be able to get it off my memory card and that will free up my memory card and then I'll be able to start using my nice camera again for the vlog. This vlog, right here. I hate using my phone for vlogging. The picture is okay, the audio is not horrible, but it's just, it's shaky, it's not very smooth. Get your Halloween costume on. Toby's upstairs sleeping, he's gonna be a rainbow. He has a rainbow costume that he looks very cute in. Pumpkin, what you doing over there? You hunting the puppy? Yeah, you like chasing him around, don't you? At 1.10, all right, I told myself I would work on this until one, and now have to get to the plants. The weather forecast shifted quite a bit. The forecast shifted, and now they're saying it's gonna be 37 tonight, which ugh, I don't feel like rolling the dice with that one because if they're wrong and it gets colder than that, then that means like a lot of potentially dead tropical plants. So looks like I'll be moving things in today. Oh, the kangaroo paw fern. Look how much better that looks. Nice and fluffy and happy looking. Give this one a really nice drink. I think it could still use some more time for some hydration, but it definitely looks better. It's more perky. Oh, I don't think we'll be able to get this on camera. There's a blue jay on the trunk of the windmill palm. No. Well, maybe you can kind of see it. It's freaking huge. Can we see it? Oh, maybe not. It, it left. I love blue jays. I know they're jerks, but wow, do they do a good job at chasing off the other pesky birds, you know, the grackles. All right, time to take your costume off. Let's go outside and walk around and look at some plants. He's such a good boy. He's such a sweetheart, Turbo. Easy war. Getting so big. There we go. Up to the backyard. So it's time to start moving some stuff in. I do have to do some tidying in the garage. There are a few spots that are a little bit 
congested that I need to work on. Oh, this Altissima <laughs> put its roots down <laughs> over there into the gravel. I think this this should probably get a repot, shouldn't it? Getting pretty leggy. Look at all the new growth on it. That's from an alocasia. Look at all that. Right here, all the way up to here. Lots of growing. Very stretched out, though. I really could have given this plant some more light this year, I think. Probably would have appreciated that. And when it comes to moving the plants in, I work my way from the biggest to the smallest and the most tropical to the most cold hardy. So uh, the Rika Palm's the first one to go in. It's actually kind of nice getting it in first because it is my least favorite of all of the plants to move in, I think, just because it is so incredibly heavy. Heavy and difficult to get inside because it's gotten really, really tall. And uh, it, that makes it difficult to get in with all the grow lights and everything that are hanging up in the distance between the garage door and everything. Yeah, I'm just going to do it. In past years, particularly last year, I made this video where I moved all the plants in. Pretty heavily detailed one, and I did that for a reason. And it was so that, well, I wouldn't have to do it again. <laughs> It's filming the process just makes it take an eternity. Even if I'm just like setting up cameras and moving them around, you, know, you gotta move the cameras a lot in order to keep things interesting. So uh, I'm just gonna start moving things in. And this is going to look very different next time you see it. Yeah, let's hope the tires on the dolly have air in them. First, I think it'd be appropriate to show what I'm working with here. So there's a pile of things to put away. There's that, I have my, my apple cactus back there, a piece that broke off. I need to get rerooted. Otherwise, not too much to be done. Iguana is going into a new cage fairly soon. That's, it's too small for it. Found a bottle of wine on the ground. Not gonna keep it because it's been opened. I have no recollection of having opened this or just like taking a sip out of the neck. I bet it was probably the last one opened of the night. That would explain that. I should check the lights before I go any further. Do they work? Uh-oh. Okay, that was weird. Maybe I need a new battery in this. Looks like there's one down there that's not working. Others, they look okay. I'm blinding myself right now. All right, not a big deal that one of them's out. In fact, when I move the plants in, I'm going to put some where they need to go, like the Eureka Palm needs to go right here, just because that's where it has to be, because it's not going to fit anywhere else. If it even fits, we'll find out. But everything else is just going to be very loosely placed for right now because there's still some things I want to do in here. Like, I want to get some more hooks up on the ceilings to... Ceilings? Just the one. It's just one ceiling. I want to get more hooks put up here so that I have more space for the hanging plants. And I can't do that while there's water in the pond thing. It's not even a pond, just a reservoir, really. Humidity reservoir, watering reservoir. In order to do that, I can't have water in there. I'll actually have to move this when I get around to doing that. So for right now, that's going to stay empty, which is not a big deal. I have a hose that attaches right back here into the house that I can water with in the meantime. And hopefully in the next couple weeks, I'll get to the hardware store and get some more hooks. And I need to redo this whole system right here. And I bet that's why this bulb over there isn't working. So it looks like that pulls pushing on it. So that's, that's probably pretty dangerous. Glad I noticed that. Now I just need to clean off this table, which has turned into like the junk table. My desk is a mess too. There's a like a whole system for plumbing supplies over here and it's falling to pieces. I ordered a new cart to put all these plumbing things in. I just eh, I haven't gotten around to it yet. I don't think I need to worry about that right now either. He's being a good helper. Lots of things to sniff and smell. Yeah, I'm gonna handle that and there's another little pile of like aquarium things over here I need to do something with. There's old buckets and filters and things that got thrown over here and some Christmas things from Michael's from last year. That's not too bad. I'd say it's like 15, 20 minutes worth of work if I'm just doing this. If I were to like scrub out the pond. I don't know if I'm going to because I gave this a scrub out a couple months ago and it's really stained. There are things you can do to get one of those stains out like muriatic acid and vinegar. Since I just use this for watering, I really, I don't care. If I had fish in it, it'd be a different story and I'd want it to be like looking perfect and all sparkly and blue, but it's getting old. Service is getting porous. Apparently this is what porous means. Ugh, I didn't like that. Whoa, this is old. This is probably from, I cleaned out a closet that I kept a lot of my aquarium stuff in. This is what that's from. Reeflink goes to the lights that were my fish tank and that fish tank video, I talked about how those lights broke. This is like seven years old. Say that can go to the recycling for sure. Moss poles, good to have. 
<laughs> bag of assorted pieces that go to all the puppy gates in the house. Don't know why that, I don't know why any of this is sitting here. Figure out something else to do with that. He is actually, Turbo, come here, baby. Come on, baby, he has gotten so good. I don't even know how much longer those gates are going to be up, which blows my mind, because Tucker, you know, my dog that passed last December, he had gates up for like, I want to say two and a half to three years. Although in Tucker's defense, a year of that was because of Toby. He's got Toby when Tucker was like two years old. Well, moments like this remind me that maybe those gates will still be up for a while. He's only five months old. Ugh, this is fun. I'm actually getting excited at this point. Oh, that, all this, these are all things used for the plants. So those, a lot of those go down on the ground here to help lift the plants up. Even though I have the poly down, the poly is really pliable. I think it's squishy, so if a plant gets watered and it's really heavy, that pushes down on it and then it uh, clogs up the drainage holes. So I've just been using milk crates for the last couple of years and working really well, except for when it's not winter and I don't know what to do with the like 30 milk crates that I have. There's more up in the attic. Oh, my shock pump. This is the pump that electrocutes you when you plug it in. I have this massive jug here that's been taking up space for a couple of years out here. I, I don't know what to do with this. I bought it. I got it from an antique store. I wanted to do one of those big glass jar closed terrariums. And then I realized that I don't, I don't want that in my house because it's ugly, right? It's not pretty. And it's very, very, very large. So I don't even know where I'd put it that I wouldn't like also kind of hate it at the same time. And here I am now, not knowing what to do with it. It just like gets scooted around all over the place every year. Maybe I should just go ahead and put some vines or grass or something in it. <sighs> Garage is ready. Started pulling and prepping the plants, getting ready to go in. And I just, I think we need to take a moment. Look at how beautiful the Eureka palm has gotten. I've always loved this palm tree, but just, holy crap, cried. Poop, I don't know, I don't know what cursing is. I don't have children, sorry. I think that one's okay. Look at the size of the trunks this has gotten. It wasn't as easy to see this in its full glory because I had it tucked in with so many other plants. Now, well, I very much wish I hadn't. This is a plant that should not be hidden by any means. Look at that, I got it back way, way, way up here to get the full thing on camera. It's even better if you can actually see the beautiful pot that it's in. <laughs> Definitely ready for a repot, that's for sure. This is not the time of year for that. Wow. Oh, it's so pretty. Will not be able to see it this well once it's in the grow space. I, I really don't think it's going to fit, but worst case scenario, hopefully this will not be what I have to do, but if I have to, these respond fine to pruning. So even though my favorite thing about this palm tree right now would be how lovely and big the canes have gotten on here. Gosh, it's stunning. Uh, if need be, you can take a saw and cut the ones that are too tall out to get the rest inside. This one and then one over behind everything. You can kind of see it in here. Those are the biggest canes on it. Oh, oh, it's so pretty. I'm thinking that this is going to need to go into uh, like a big, very large plastic nursery can next year and get set into the ground in the garden somewhere where it can really shine on its own. That should not be hidden over here on the edge of the hot tub like that. What a waste. Didn't even get to see how beautiful it was. I mean, really, I think part of it was it just had it turned just the wrong direction because the other side's a lot more full, so you could even see all those gorgeous canes on the trunk. And if I get this into a plastic container, I can send it off with the other big palms to the greenhouse for winter storage. I would I would really prefer that since it's, we can just do one more winter in the house and then this can go off with the other big ones during the winter time. I don't send it as it is because they don't guarantee the pottery and if this pot broke, I would be devastated. I don't get attached to a lot of the like materials out here in the pots, but I absolutely love this pot and if anything were to happen to it i'd be bummed they don't make them anymore i have two i originally had three one of them broke so i only have two left oh hope i didn't jinx myself let's hope i don't break it that would suck but then it would get that repot and i'd glue it back together if it broke into the right pieces to glue it back together and put it back in that corner and just leave it there put something else in it actually that yellow bamboo Maybe I would move that over to each side of the... I don't need to be doing this right now. Only thing I need to be doing is getting this plant inside. Oh, 
such a shame. You can't see it like this when you're up close to it in the grow space. I've got to figure something else out there. Look at it! I feel like I should just like do a live stream of just look at the palm tree. A 24 hour live stream of just palm tree. Basket grass came in very nicely too. I had too many plants over there, couldn't even see them. See, that's the thing. I have been trying to cut back on the plants. You may notice I haven't really gotten any new house plants this year. I can't think of any. I mean, there's, I have the Gloriosum, but that was like last winter. Uh, what else? I don't think anything's new, except for that kangaroo puffer and that y'all just saw me pick up at Lowe's. Because things had hit a point last year and the year before, but I was like, I have so many that I don't even have time to really appreciate them. So I cut back on them. I was like, I have enough, I'm good. And then I miss being able to see the beauty of this one. So clearly I need to get rid of more. Just kidding. Kind of, not really. By the way, I'm gonna know that kangaroo puffer, and here's my other one. Look at this. Isn't it lovely? Hard to believe that that little thing in there in the kitchen is going to turn into one of these when it gets more mature. Look at how neat those roots are. Such a fun plant, and yes, and it smells nice. I need to divide this one up. I think that it would appreciate that, don't you? But for right now, I just really want to take it in. I don't want to start chopping on it if I don't have to. That's why I got the other one, so I wouldn't have to chop on it. I also need to remember to make sure to talk loud, because I keep forgetting I'm not using my nice camera. Oh, I was supposed to take cuttings from this and do propagations this summer. Totally forgot. I can still do it, but it's a lot easier to do propagations during the summer. Do them outside when it's nice and humid. Oops, still looks pretty. It's the Brazilian fireworks. One of my favorite plants, did a video on it last winter. It's like, I think, actually possibly the worst viewed video on the channel. At least in a few years. Yeah, it's just whatever. I think it's awesome. All right, here we go. Time to get this one inside. Oh, hopefully. I know, you're probably getting sick of it, but I just, I can't stop looking at it. All the different angles. Never get to see it from the top like this. Wish there were clouds in the sky. What a gorgeous time lapse that would be. No, oh, just wait till next year. And on a nice cloudy day, I'll throw the Eureka palm onto a dolly just so I can tilt it over and do a time lapse of the clouds. No, not really. I won't do that. I'm not going to do that. All right, on to the next one. I'm kind of in a tight space here. The tie. It, there it is. Can't really see it. Look at this. Finally, finally have some branching. There's a nub coming up there from the bottom, and another one right here. And then there's a little baby tie coming up over there. I have had this plant for so long. I don't know how long, like eight to 10 years probably. And finally, it's just been a awkward lanky stick the whole time. Does that mean that it broke somewhere in here? Is that possible? Is there a break? Maybe. I didn't realize how far this had fallen. This, <laughs> all of this is supposed to be up here. I am kind of to a point where I'm wondering if I should just go ahead and cut that and stick it back down into the soil. This isn't the time for that though. There's an exciting tie update. Little baby ties, fun. Always with the roots. Come on, come on. There we go. Come on. Jeez, That's a lot of roots there. Okay, so normally the Monstera goes up there on that table, which I know probably seems silly, but if it doesn't, then I can't get anything else on the table. So by having it up right there, I can put things around. You get it? You get it right now? That's not going to work. That's okay. That's a team lift thing. I'm going to need help getting that up there so it can stay there for right now. Eureka Palm. Look, there it is. Had to do a little bit of pruning, but made it fit. However, it is going to be very important to remember next year that I have got to repop that and figure something else out because it's not going to keep fitting in here. Oh, so pretty. All right, so I know I said earlier that um, I was just going to do like a before and after kind of thing. Like when I was out there back there by the hot tub that I was gonna cut it off and move everything in and then I got excited about that and the Munster. People always like the Munster updates because you know, it's like the only time you get to see it in all its glory. However, for the sake of my vocal cords, uh, this is it. It's not the end of the vlog, I'll be back here. In just a moment, but I'm gonna bring everything else in that needs to come in with tonight's temperatures and then, you know, the other, not everything has to come in right now. Oh, oleanders, they can stay out, windmill palms, uh, things that I know can handle some light frost, they'll be okay. 
Like, even the Alpinias I usually leave those out. But some of the other things like the Dracinas, Dracina, is that a thing? Dracinas down there, all the pothos and those things. Those should come in today or even tomorrow. They did adjust the forecast again. But since I've already gone this far, I'm going to try and get as much moved in. But I have to get moved in right now. I need to go to the gorilla cart because right now it's got a broken pot in it that I need to glue back together. But right now I need to use it. So yeah, when we come back, it'll either be tonight or tomorrow, another time. After I've had a chance to rest my voice, and this will, the garage will hopefully be fall plants. It should be. I would hope that I get some more done here in the next day or so. Well, everything's in. Packed a little bit tight, but I don't have anything arranged as to where they're supposed to go, so that's that's easily fixed. I'll have a few plants in the gorilla cart that need to be reorganized and redistributed onto the shelves over here. The shelves, add somebody helping me, just makes things go faster. This whole thing took, I don't know, an hour? Something like that, it wasn't too bad. But it goes a little bit faster when you have someone who can just hand you all the little plants. The little plants are what takes the longest. All the tiny little things. Big plants, you just scoot them on in. Not a big deal. Goes very quickly. Oh, but the point there was that uh, things aren't organized. Over here, they're just tossed onto the shelves. Like the succulents and cactus, those always go up top. There's no drainage up there. And uh, this whole side in general tends to be a little bit more cool and dry. So like ficus, some of the orchids, the alocasias, those tend to go over here. I know you wouldn't think a few feet would make that much of a difference, but it does. The closer you get to the house, the warmer it is. I mean, look, this shelf, <laughs> there's barely anything on it. Just some plants that have been knocked over. Some that I wasn't even sure about bringing like this geranium. I figured, I mean, why not? Bring it in, see what happens. I usually tend to err on the side of just if, you, if I'm not sure about it, just bring it all in. And if down the line I decide, oh, I really didn't need to bring that in, I can get another one for a few bucks next year. Like, um, there are a couple of fuchsias that I brought in there in the house right now. But those are plants where I'm like, eh, I don't really know, but why not? If I change my mind, I can always toss them out to the yard waste or give them away to somebody. A lot of what's over here isn't even going to be staying here. I have things that need to be repotted over here. <laughs> kind of tucked behind everything in this like crevice. I have three bromeliads that need to be repotted and eight hanging baskets. There are two Marble Queen Pothos, the Neon Pothos, the Manjula, and uh, I don't know, something else. Neon Pothos, something like that. All kinds of things need to be repotted. Overall, just need new baskets. The bromeliads, they're actually okay in their baskets, but their baskets are all broken, so they need to go into something else. Definitely not going to be keeping plants like the Gloriosum and the Mandevilla vine and the Medanella orchid. It's not an orchid, but the Medanella up there. That that shelf is really hard to access. No water in here yet. Pretty sure I already talked about that. I didn't really go into full detail with all of that, or really just as to why I haven't arranged the plants in general. I'm going to be waiting at least probably another week and a half to two weeks until I place things where they need to go and even worry about putting up plastic to help hold the heat and humidity in. And that's because on the 17th, there's an electrician coming who's going to see if I can get an actual garage heater installed up here in this corner. I've been trying to get somebody out here since late August and uh, finally got somebody who had returned my phone calls and he said the 17th of November is the earliest they could come. I don't even know if it's an option. Won't know if they can do it until they show up. They have to put a special like, a, I'm not an electrician, so just take everything and see if they're grain of salt. But a 220 or a 240 volt, there are different types of garage heaters, would have to be installed up there, a special outlet. And then a separate line run down to a new box in the basement, which would probably also have to have its own electrical line run from the street out here. So it's a, it's a big deal. But with the number of plants that I keep out here, and as long as I've been doing this, I just, it seems like a worthy investment at this point. I'm not into the space heaters. They make me nervous and that's what I use to heat the space. And I'm, I'm just kind of tired of spending winter time being like, oh no, well, my garage doesn't burn down. That's the worst part of winter is dealing with the space heaters. I don't like them. Make sure to use nice ones. There's one down there on the ground. It's not plugged in, don't worry. Um, otherwise I wouldn't have stuff sitting on top of it that are, you know, you all listed or rated. It's like decent ones. Ones that have nice reviews and that I know are safe. I always make sure that there's never things piled around them like 
right now, but it's not plugged in, so I'm not worried about having stuff piled around it. Always have like a clean perimeter on those space heaters just to be safe, but it still freaks me out. I even spent a crud ton of money last year on really nice, heavy duty, thick gauged extension cords to plug them into. These things are very expensive. But I had noticed that the heaters, the cords were plugged into, were getting warm and that's not supposed to happen. I talked to some people who like knew a lot about this stuff and they said, yeah, you're not supposed to plug space heaters into extension cords. And if you do, they need to be like, I think it was 12 or 14 gauge, something like that. Don't, you need to look that up. Don't take my word for that. I think the overall opinion there is you're just not supposed to plug them into extension cords, period. But yeah, you know, it's been this long. I don't want to keep pushing it though. That's why I want to get an actual heater put up here right behind that light fixture where that fan is so that I don't even have to worry about heaters being on the ground anymore. And uh, having one of the ones that's either a 220 or 240, I don't remember, I'm gonna let the professionals handle all those details, it's way over my head. That caliber of heater that's actually built for a garage could heat the entire garage more efficiently. The space heaters just don't cut it. They, when I have two layers of plastic up, I put them side by side with like a one to two inch gap in between. That does help an awful lot. But it's a decent amount of work having to put that plastic up every year and run it through here. I used those poles last year. If, if you'll know what I'm talking about if I end up doing it again, because I may still do that to help hold humidity in. Those made the process much more fast and really it was kind of a game changer. So putting the plastic up around everything, I, I pull all the plants in to here and then the plastic goes up right along this ridge, all the way down that way, up around this corner, and then like that. And then there's all that space over there against that wall that just is cold, which is fine. Cause they're usually plants that need to stay more on the cold side and I keep those over there. It creates a smaller space, this space in here, to be heated. Makes it go more efficiently. You just can't rely on those little 1500 watt space heaters to heat a, this entire space. Like it's just not going to happen, especially since I still need to insulate this wall. I, I'll get to it, don't worry. Someday it'll happen. Now, if they can do the heater up there and it's affordable, if that can get done, then I will I'll make sure that that gets done because that way the whole garage is heated. And like I said, I don't have to rush to get the plastic up. Like I said, the plastic should still go up for the humidity. The heating will be much more efficient. I don't have heaters on the ground that I have to get around and be concerned with all winter long. And I even, I have like alarms and things out here, Wi-Fi security things to alert me, but they only alert you once something's gone wrong. And I, I just don't want anything to go wrong. And then you have to assume they work. I don't know if they work because they've never gone off, which is great. Don't ever want them to go off, but you know, it could happen. Oh, this, I don't know if I talked about this. Quick change of subject. The limelight Dracaena was underneath the pygmy date palm and the uh, white bird of paradise. And when the palm tree people came to pick those up, I forgot to move this into a new shady spot. So that happened like within a matter of hours. It's okay though, look, I mean, it's already pushing out new growth. They grow very quickly. So I feel bad for doing that, but it's gonna be okay. Just a little photo oxidation, not the end of the world. So that is why the plants are not arranged. It's also why I had to, or felt that I should film all of Vlogmas back in October. Vlogmas, like 18, or so videos just to get things started because I really wasn't sure if I was going to have a space to film in and I won't know until I find out about that heater because if they can do it, they're probably gonna have to like tear some stuff out of the wall and you know what I mean? So I have to like move things. It's the other reason I didn't fill this up. In addition to, I want to get up here and put up more hooks for the hanging plants because there are a lot of them. It also doesn't make sense until I find out what's going on with that heater situation. I'm very hopeful that in a couple of weeks, there will be a great big heater up there, but I don't know, have no idea. And probably have to move some stuff around, you know, safety wise, like I said, I'm gonna just listen to professionals. They'll tell me what to do and I'll do it. Whatever it takes to get it done, I will do. Unless it costs like a ton of money, which I mean, running a new line probably will be expensive. Potentially cheaper in the long run though, because as it is, if it gets below, I'd say below 20 to 25 degrees outside, then that means there are three space heaters that have to run in here to keep things at like 55 to 60. That's not very efficient. And that's not even that warm that it's keeping things. It's two 1500 watts and one 750 watt. And that's when I really get nervous. Luckily, it doesn't stay that cold for that long. Typically, you know, it's above 30 most of the time. And then we'll have cold spells where it drops really, really cold. That's when all three of them go on. Most of the winter, there's usually only one space heater running. 
especially last year, and I may do the same thing this year where I just kind of let things stay more on the cool side. It's a lot easier. Don't have to deal with pests as much. Don't have to water anywhere near as often, but don't have the joy and the satisfaction of like having explosive growth out of the plants like I have had in other winters when I kept it really toasty in here and things were just growing all over the place and going wild. Yeah, that's where things are at. Hopefully things will get pretty in here and nice and arranged in a couple of weeks. I'm not just gonna let things sit like this for a couple of weeks, but for right now they're fine. I just wanted to get them in here. And I'm glad that I did because that forecast thing was gonna be 37 was way off and it got down to I think 32. And then uh, last night, it's been two nights since the clip where I said, we'll be right back. I think that the sensor said 29.7 last night, so that could have been very bad. Although there were a few plants I forgot about, um, but they were totally fine. So, I, you know, the ground's still warm, still pushing some heat up, so there's usually like a one or two day cushion, but that's about it. And it obviously that depends on the plant too, right? But a lot of these probably would have been toast. The crotons, I mean, they'll defoliate at that type of temperature, usually depending on how much moisture there is in the air, but they'll usually come back, same thing with hibiscus. Things like the monstera, the Metanilla back here with its beautiful, wow, okay, really? The Metanilla back here with its beautiful flower. Eureka, Paul, I'm trying to steal the spotlight. Gloriosum, those plants, they really, that wouldn't have been great. And then all the tiny little things over here wouldn't have ended well for them. Isn't it exciting? I'm so happy to have the plants inside. And to, well, I'm gonna get, I, I didn't clean the desk off yet. I'll get to it, don't worry about it. I don't know if they'll even be filming out here right away anyways, because this view without the water, well, it's not that bad actually. But there's some excess things that really need to be organized because I got all the plumbing stuff moved into this new cart. I'm pretty sure I mentioned that, right? At the beginning of the vlog, I said there was a cart over here and it was broken, but I had a new one that I needed to put everything in. Well, there's that. Much more efficient, have like aquarium type Mm, no, that's not organized. Hey, eye hooks. See, okay, I also like wasn't really paying attention during the process. There we go. There's some different aquarium fittings. You get it. I was gonna like do a plumbing tour, but that's not very exciting. It's just bulkheads. Things for the hoses and whatnot. So yeah, my next thing is to clean up the desk. Going to do that sometime this weekend, probably for right now. I'm just gonna chill. Keep editing some videos to be coming out in, I think, end of November into December at this point is where I'm at with editing. And uh, try and just enjoy things and relax. Don't really have many options because I have to wait and find out what's going on with the electric up here. Though it does look like I have a light that needs to be replaced. That's on. <laughs> There's not much coming out of it, so. Looks like I need to replace both of those. They're just shop lights, nothing special. These over here actually have LED tubes put in them that are for growing plants. And I never noticed a difference between the shelf and the others as far as growth goes. I did that all last year. Uh, there was a begonia on this one and then a begonia over here, the maculatas, that's what they were. And they did pretty much the same. So I'm probably just going to stick with the cheaper shop lights from Sam's Club, because that seemed to work fine. And you can link them together, so that's nice too. It's a lot easier having less things that are plugged in. It's not ideal to use lights that aren't actually grow lights. You have to experiment with them, and that takes a few months, right? Because you can't just plug it in and say, oh, this works. You have to wait and see how the plant grows, but this is year four, I think, that I've been using these, and it's been doing fine, so. It's hopefully they still sell the same ones. If they don't, that well, that could be different. Then I'll do something else and figure it out. As it is right now, I can just go back there and pop those blinds open and they'll get a pretty good amount of light for a few hours a day. When temperatures are cool like they are right now, it's, I don't know, I think it's 42 outside right now. And in here, I think it's like 55. So it'll dip into the 40s potentially tonight, maybe. So I don't have the heaters on, but when it's cool like that, I'm not really watering or trying to get the plants to grow anyways. Don't want them to dry out either. There's kind of a dance and a balance you have to have there with temperatures are cooler. Got tongue tied there. And then there's some plants that are going to go in the house that I traditionally keep in the house, like this Dracaena reflexa always goes inside. This plant has done so much growing over the years. I mean, I guess I could leave it out here. I just never really had space for it in here, but I sent that big bird of paradise off to the greenhouse, which normally goes right here and takes up this entire spot from the Eureka Palm and over and then everything else just kind of piled around it. So I do have room for it. 
Just have to remember to rotate it because if it doesn't get rotated, everything that's on the side where that bond is is going to look terrible. Orchid buds. That's exciting. I'm sure those will appreciate being taken out of the gorilla cart. Need to do that. Those I will still hang up over the pond for right now. That way I can really drench them with water. The Vandacious orchids, which is what these are right here, they all have aerial roots. So they don't have anything that goes down into a bark or into some sort of media, so they dry out rather quickly. I figured those are probably better off just hanging out in the gorilla cart for right now because there's gonna be more humidity in there. And then they won't be exposed to too much air movement, which will dry them out even faster. But uh, that will be a thing this weekend, making sure those get hung up. And then I'll head to Lowe's at some point and get a bunch of hooks, find the studs in the ceiling, get those put up so that all the baskets, when those get repotted, hopefully next week, those can all go up there. Although, huh, now that I'm saying that, I'll, I still need to do the repot no matter what, but I was planning on putting those hooks up in this area here. I was like, okay, I figured I could put two or three along there and two or three along there and then the others can just go back on the pole where they've always gone. If the heater is mounted, it has that's the only spot that it could possibly be mounted. So if there's a heater there, is that just going to blast hot, dry air onto the plants that are hanging up? I'll put them on adjustable poles so they can be lower. Guys, there we go. Problem solved. Thinking out loud there. Sometimes it helps the process move along. I don't really need to worry about that yet. Just need to enjoy not having to watch the forecast constantly and wonder if something's gonna randomly happen that's gonna kill the plants. That alone is enough to be excited about. The grow lights, just bring it up because I know I'll get asked. These are, well, they're mostly the Sansi LED, or Sansi, Sansi, I don't know. LED grow lights, been using them for a few years and have been very, very pleased with how well they have done. They're not all the Sansi. Every year I replace some more as just like the regular shop lights like those four right there and throw in a few more to try to spread out the cost. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, six left to switch over. And I'll do that at some point before I get the water back in here. So another thing I need to do, get on Amazon and order more light bulbs. I don't think that the Ferris mask color cases are going to fit over here like they did last year. Cause they're like, 30 times the size they were. They were just puny little sticks last winter. Now, they may just end up getting a cutback and making them fit under there. They did well in the spot last year. With this particular Colocasia, they don't overwinter the same as like the kind that have a tuber. These have a, kind of a quorm on them. Like they're in a weird embitase, in between place. They have a quorm that also puts out a runner, similar to the Bikini Teenies. They actually look a lot like Bikini Teenies, so they might have some Bikini Teeny DNA in them. I don't know. Bikini Teenies are the ones I have outside if you don't know what I'm talking about. But since they don't seem to be hardy into zone six, they have to come inside for the winter. They don't have a big old potato. <laughs> they don't have a big old tuber. I was gonna say potato. A big tuber, or a lot of people call them bulbs that can be stored, which is a much easier thing to do. So, uh, what I did last year is I let them stay a little bit more on the dry side and I kept them further back towards that window because that window's somewhat drafty and that helped keep them a little bit more cool, but they were still under really bright light. And then I just made sure to water them when they were, I don't know, probably 20 to 50% dried out. And then the warmer things got out here as the season progressed and got closer to spring, when temperatures started to be more like 75 and up, maybe even around 70, then I increased the watering, but it wasn't my goal to keep them moist at all times. So you know, growing them inside is nothing like growing them outside. They love moisture. That's This is a rule for all plants. All plants that love moisture outside doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to want to be sopping wet at all times inside. You don't have the airflow and you don't have the same heat, which is what keeps them moving. Is this out of focus? Was it out of focus that entire time? I am so sorry. So that's what I do with those. So potentially they'll get a little cut back. I think I also had them on wicking cord last year, which I ran down into these drainage reservoirs here. That's what these are. It's just for drainage. So I can water them heavily and the water can collect in there. I do have some holes that are in the sides I need to plumb to run some tubes. I'll run a tube that goes from this one down to this one, and then it'll run down to a reservoir and I'll do the same thing with that one. Boy, when they get really, really full, that I don't have to worry about them overflowing because that became somewhat of an issue last year. So that'll take care of that. It's like a five minute project. Another thing to add to the list, lots of fun activities 
planned for the winter already. Isn't this exciting? May have been on a wicking cord. I think it was. It was also put up in Cocoa Peat, which isn't peat. Cocoa Bop, which some people call Cocoa Peat, which doesn't, for me, I, in my experience, unless you admit it with a lot of other things, doesn't wick moisture very well which may have been what got it through the winter. I had trouble keeping them hydrated when things were warmer. That's when I put them onto the wicking cord and they did much better. They never grew very well because they're in a dormant state, a semi-dormant state, but they kept doing what they should be doing or what would be expected of them to do when it's like, you know, 55, 65 degrees in a garage. Oh yeah, almost forgot that Prince of Orange. That's on the repot list too. That thing, it's doing really well. It's a very happy and healthy plant, but I've been saying I need to repot it for like two years. So it's time to just go ahead and get that done, despite the fact that it seems totally fine. But we all know eventually that won't be the case, right? All of a sudden it'll get to a point where you water it and nothing happens and you go, oh, I don't understand what's wrong with the plant. And then you find it has root rot because the soil that's in there just turned to like muck into mud and wasn't draining well and there's anaerobic bacteria and just all kinds of, bad things. Not all anaerobic bacteria is bad, but we're talking about root rot. That's generally something that starts that whole process. I'm feeling good. I know at some point in the vlog, I talk about how once this video comes out, I'm gonna be exhausted and probably like pass out for a couple of days, but then I forgot about the adrenaline rush I get from having everything moved inside and the just drastic change of everything. So it's not really the case. I more feel refueled and ready to get into projects. And I'm actually really excited to film out here. It is so much easier filming indoors. Outdoors is nice because of the activity level, being able to move around and do more things and change the scenery. But with the airplanes and the neighbors and just like screaming children and you just, you never know what's going to be going on. So much easier to just be able to come out here, sit at my desk, turn on all my various filming lights, get the tripods and different cameras set up and just, go. Love it. I'm looking forward to it. I need to do some like plant crafts. I'm in the mood to create. Repotting will be fun, but it's not the same. Like I want to do some arrangements and maybe some terrariums. We'll see. Got to think about that one. Oh yeah. See this begonia. That's not even supposed to be over here. That's supposed to be over there on the shelves. That's where it was last year. Still flowering. Flowered almost all winter last year. We'll see if it does that again this year. I kind of doubt that it will, but it did get a repot. So maybe. If it hadn't gotten the repot, I would say definitely not because it'd be really hard to keep this thing hydrated. And even notice outdoors that this begonia whimsy has some flowers on it. They hang, oh, <laughs> has a couple of flowers on it. They hang on the inside, so it's not really as noticeable. It's another one of those plants that you tend to grow for the foliage. And that nice, nice bright pink spots. All right, thanks for hanging out. Hope everybody's doing well. I feel great. So excited to have this done. Feels nice to be able to have everything inside and not have to stress about everything going on outdoors. The weather, that is. Also very excited about the new growth on the uh, Monstera. <laughs> Gotta get that up onto the table this weekend too. I have someone who's gonna come over and help me lift that up there. I could probably do it. I don't wanna push it. You know, I have that crater from the surgeries and the cancer and everything last year. And sometimes if I lift something that's really really heavy then it like throbs it doesn't like it's not a horrible pain it's just a really weird icky feeling that lasts for a few days i don't know how to describe it i'm just i'm getting used to my body that's only been healed up for a few months now so i'm still adjusting to that i just i don't know i feel like the smart thing to do would be to wait no i know i know i could lift it and the temptation is very strong so i need to just just get away from it get away from it and allow someone to help me the other things that i'm waiting on happening this thing it's taking an eternity to fill up. This is RODI water. It's for cleaning the fish tank, doing water changes. This one, this tank needs a water change. And there it is. That's the reason I came inside. There are still some plants in the house. So the Hoopers palm, the Maya palm, Hooperiana, that's inside. It's not staying right there. I just put it there so the trick-or-treaters couldn't see me through the window. There were some that were still creeping and crawling around after like nine o'clock. And I was like, no, I don't think so. Get out of here. That light like comes right in to the living room. You can see like where I said, didn't have any candy, did Halloween at somebody else's house this year. So that's, that's why that's there. But isn't it pretty? I think that looks so nice in the house. It'll look even better in a different spot and in a different pot. I'll put it in either a cash pot or a basket, something like that. Found a couple of fish tanks in the garage. Knew they're in the garage. Just need to bring them in the house and packages. All fun things I need to get to that I've been neglecting because I was focused on getting those plants inside. Those are Christmas presents, if you were wondering. 
did the Christmas shopping early this year. I've got Toby creeping on me through the door up there. Yeah, thanks for hanging out, everybody. I got some stuff to do in my basement now that I freed up some time, not having to move plants in and out of the house. Comment down below, say hi, love talking to everybody. What's going on in your gardens? You got your plants inside? Now that all the plants are inside, it's time to get moving on the next project. And I'm so excited about it. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff here. Keep on growing, everybody.